Hey, what's up everybody? Happy holidays and welcome to the next lesson in On One's Eight Days of Editing. In this lesson, let's take a winter landscape and bring it to life using custom brush shapes and some textures inside of Photo Raw. Throughout the editing journey, we'll also talk about the Visualize Dust Spot feature that allows us to see and remove dust spots much easier. Let's jump into it. I'll see you in the editing room. Inside of Photo Raw, I've navigated to the practice file for this lesson, and it's this winterlandscape.cr2 file here. So let's just select this practice file, and let's head over to the edit module. So with this image, before we start modifying it and getting creative with the brush shapes and textures, let's zoom in here to the background in the sky, and you can see that we have quite a few dust spots and blemishes within our landscape scene. So to quickly remove these, let's use the retouching tools inside of Photo Raw and also the all new Visualize Dust feature. So let's head over to the retouch tools. They live over here in our tool well on the left hand side of Photo Raw. And I'm going to grab my spot healing brush, just a really awesome tool for removing these small imperfections in your scene. And Let's head up here to the top tool modifier bar for a second and let's go to the right side of it. And we can see we have this all new visualize dust option that we can enable here. And this is going to add in a lot of texture and detail in our scene so that we can easily see all of the imperfections and blemishes within our landscape. So now I can just use my spot healing brush. I can just brush over one of these little imperfections I can modify the region that it heals with here. And I can also modify the cloned area, if you will, or that region by moving this handle. And you can see there were actually quite a few dust spots in this background. And because we had that visualized dust feature enabled, it was really easy to spot those and remove them. So I'll just set up here and I'll choose done. And now we can start modifying the look and the creative style of this photograph. So with those dust spots removed from our background, let's modify the framing and composition of this image with the crop tool. So let's just hit C on our keyboards that will pull up our crop tool. And I'm going to make sure that this freeform option is selected up here. Then I'm just going to pull up on this bottom handle And that's going to remove some of that excess area on the bottom that we don't really need in our photo. So I think everything looks pretty good. Let's just head up here to the apply button, which you can also do by hitting enter on your keyboard. So with our image cropped, let's go and modify the basic tone and color of our landscape inside of this develop tab here. Just going to head down here to my contrast slider and let's increase this contrast quite a bit. Then let's pull up on our midtones just a little bit. And then I'm going to head down to my white slider here and I'm just going to increase that quite a bit just to bring a bit of punch and pop to this winter landscape. So let's hit the backslash key on our keyboard. And I really like how it's looking so far. Let's just head down to our color area in the develop tab and let's just warm the image up a bit right about there, just to give it a bit more color and a bit more warmth. Now let's head up here to the effects tab where we can add on a nice stylish texture before we go in and apply creative brush shapes to the scene. So I'll add a filter and let's add the textures filter. And inside of our textures filter, I love going into this more menu and I really love this grunge vignette light. The reason I like this texture is because if I turn this off and on, it adds in a bit of a vignette to the center of the scene, making this area pop with light, but then it dims down the right and left sides of our landscape. And the great thing about the textures filter and any filter inside of Photo Raw is you can readjust to your taste. So let's pull up on this opacity slider quite a bit. And then let's pull back on the brightness. 
And that's going to bring in just a bit more contrast to the scene and just tone down this already really white and really bright landscape. So now that we've added on our texture, let's go into the local adjustments tab here and we can start incorporating our custom brush shapes. With this local adjustment here, I'm just going to double click the title to rename it and let's rename it snow. We're going to use this local adjustment to paint on the snow brush shapes. So let's head down here to the bottom of this local adjustment and let's enable this paint with color option. And inside of this colored rectangle here, I'll just select this and I'm going to go into the last tab in this colors dialog. So we have these five tabs here. I'm going to select this last one with the colored pencils and I'll choose this snow color. So now we need to import our custom brush shapes. Let's head up here to the top bar. I'll go into the file menu and I'm going to go to manage extras. Inside of the extras manager here, let's go to the brush shapes tab and then let's go to the import button and I'll navigate to the practice files for this lesson and I'm going to select this snow and frost file. I'll choose open and then I'll just add a new category and I'll name it snow and frost. Once you've imported the brush shapes, you can view them right next to the snow and frost category here. So let's close out of our extras dialog and let's head up to our shape menu at the top bar and let's scroll all the way down here to the snow and frost collection here. And I'm just going to select a couple of these. Let's use this chaotic snow one. I'm going to increase the brush size all the way and I'm just going to paint this on randomly to my scene. Another helpful tip when you're painting on snowy brush shapes or really any brush shapes where you want to maintain a bit of randomness is you can use the angle slider up here at the top bar and you can adjust the angle of the snow to make the patterns a bit more unique. So then I'll just select a, another brush shape here And I think that looks pretty good for some really intense flying snow in our scene. So now let's go up to this snow local adjustment. I'm just going to hide this. And now I'm going to add another adjustment. And I'm going to rename this adjustment ice and frost. So let's do the same thing we did before with our snow local adjustment. Let's go down to the paint with color option. We'll select this colored rectangle here and then we'll go to the snow, oops, snow color. Then let's use our brush shape menu. We'll head down here and we'll grab this icicle one. And I'm just going to rotate it so that it's at zero. And then I'm going to increase the size which you can do with the bracket keys on your keyboard. And I'm just going to drop a nice big icicle here. And then I'm going to make it smaller. Maybe not that much smaller. Right there. And I'll just drop that there. So we sort of have two little drips of ice or icicles coming down our frame now. And now what I want to do is just paint on a couple areas of frost. So let's go back up to our shape menu and let's use these three frost brush shapes to paint in some interest in the scene. So let's just click this first one. I'll increase the size quite a bit. Just drop that down there. Then let's use the next one. Maybe put that there. 
And then let's use this other shape here and we can maybe lower the brush size a bit and we'll also lower the opacity down to maybe about 56. And we can paint this in in different areas to add some interest. And a pro tip is you can use shift and option and the bracket keys to rotate with your keyboard. And I think that's looking pretty great for just a nice creative overlay on our scene. One thing we can do with these local adjustments, if we want to add in a bit more blending or creative style to the scene is we can go into the blending options for them with this gear icon here, and we can modify the blending mode. One mode I really like to use in cases like this where I'm trying to overlay something on top of my scene is I'll head down here to the overlay or the soft light blend modes. These are really awesome for just blending overlays into your scene and adding in a bit more contrast where the creative brush shape or overlay might be. So I'll just use that overlay one. I think that looks pretty good just like that. So now let's go back into the effects tab and I'm just gonna add one last filter here and I'm gonna head down here to this color balance filter and I'm gonna go into this more menu and I'm gonna go down here to warm, cool, matte. That's gonna add in sort of a faded matte look on the scene where we have warm highlights and we have nice cool shadows. Let's go into the midtones tab here. Let's pull up on this hue slider here into more of an orangish color. Then let's pull up on our amount so that we can apply some of that color into the scene. And then let's pull up on our brightness just a little bit. And I really like that warm, cool color, especially just to blend in all of our overlays and the creative brush shapes that we've used. Let's hit the backslash key in our keyboard to view our original. And here's our modified styled edit. That's an easy way to incorporate creative brush shapes into your scene along with a texture and some style. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.